This is Dexter Goad, uh, USS Newport News, 1961 and 1964. In 1962, in October, I was leaving the Monticello Hotel to get some breakfast, and I uh, was picked up with a shore patrol, carried back to the ship, as well as a bunch of other sailors, to get underway for what later turned out to be the Cuban Missile Crisis. Here is a short clip of the USS Newport News and its involvement in the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1962, high-flying reconnaissance aircraft revealed that the Soviets were attempting to overcome the United States' lead in long-range nuclear munitions by moving missiles with offensive nuclear potential into the new communist state that was the island of Cuba. To halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. I have directed the continued and increased close surveillance of Cuba and its military buildup. I have directed the armed forces to prepare for any eventuality. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. President Kennedy gambled that the Navy could bring the untenable situation back from the brink of thermonuclear holocaust. The USS Newport News, with turret one aimed at the Lebensky, demanded that the Russians uncover their missiles for inspection. It was obvious that both ships were getting their orders directly from Washington and Moscow. The standoff lasted for hours. So here was this young president, still thought by lots of people to be wet behind the ears, who had to make these decisions for one of the great superpowers. To my father was the idea how he can calm it down and reach his goal. Very easy decision, how they can prevent the invasion, not losing the face and not to be impeached. There wasn't one person in the White House who wasn't pretty sure that in a few hours we'd have to sink one of those Russian ships. The Cuban Missile Crisis is a classic example of the use of naval force where a shot is not fired in anger, yet carries out the mission of the National Command Authorities. President Kennedy wanted the Soviet offensive weapons, the missiles and the bombers that had been brought into Cuba, to be removed. The fleet was able to quarantine Cuba to prevent any additional offensive weapons from coming in and then to verify their removal. And that was done by patrol aircraft, by surface ships, by submarine surveillance. All the national systems, the naval systems were brought to bear. This is Dexter Goad, radar operator in Sky One. After hours of the rescues refusing to uncover their missiles, the Admiral ordered Turret 1 to load and stand by to fire. This word was passed on the topside speakers in Russian and English. I could see World War III unfolding before my eyes. But then the shirtless Russian crew came topside and uncovered the missiles. This is Chet Robinson's log with that day's entries. You can see this and learn more about what happened on that infamous day so long ago on the My Love of Thunder website. Thank you. This is retired Master Chief Goad in 2007. I was more frightened that day than I was five years later. Hi, this is Dexter Goad, uh, USS Newport News, 1966 to 1969. In December of 1967, we were fired on in Vietnam by 28 different gun sites at one time. The following is some clips from that period. We now join Huntley Brinkley in progress from a December 1967 newscast. Heavily armed of its class is one of the units of the 7th Fleet fighting the war off the coast of North Vietnam. 
Because of its size and firepower, the cruiser is assigned special missions. Here is a report from NBC News correspondent Howard Tucker. Until she arrived here off the coast of North Vietnam three months ago, the Newport News never had fired her guns in combat during her entire 19 years as a warship. Now, she is working overtime. She's assigned targets in North Vietnam that U.S. destroyers have either been unable to reach or hit hard enough to destroy. The ship gets most of her firepower from nine 8-inch 55 caliber guns. They can be fired automatically. The use of case ammunition, the U.S. Navy says, makes these 8-inch rapid-fire guns the fastest major caliber guns on land or sea. This time, North Vietnamese shore batteries gave them no trouble. Recently, it was altogether different. North Vietnamese shore gunners opened up on the USS McCormick, a destroyer working with the Newport News. The North Vietnamese started shooting when the ships were seven miles from the beach. Some shells landed extremely close to the big cruiser. And the Newport News opened up. At times, enemy shells bracketed the McCormick. She fired back with everything she had. The enemy shells were still falling not far from the McCormick, when she was 11 miles from shore. The McCormick was hit by some shrapnel, but was not damaged seriously. Howard Tuckner, NBC News, aboard the Newport News, off North Vietnam. 19 December, 1967, North Vietnam. This is the captain speaking. That was a rather uh, active uh, afternoon. Uh, we went into a make a strike at a very important choke point. Actually, there were four different targets that we had. They were very deep uh, on Route 1A. Uh, we had to get into about uh, uh, 16,000 yards from the known uh, coastal defense sites. And uh, in, in fact, uh, since uh, about 10 days ago, we went into the same place and didn't draw any fire. However, I've told you before, uh, uh, you never know uh, why they shoot and why they don't shoot. Well, today, uh, they shot. We were just about to dodging some fishing boats right up uh, almost dead ahead of us. And suddenly, uh, plunk, 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 we see these big uh, splashes ahead. And I give uh, a right full runner an uh, all-ahead flank and let's get out of here. So... Uh, then it started, and it really uh, went on hot and heavy for about uh, 10 minutes. Most of the rounds were falling around uh, our shotgun, uh, the DDG McCormick. However, uh, they were working over our way, and at one time they were on both sides of us uh, very, very close. I don't know how many guns he had shooting. I'd estimate he had 15, 20 maybe. Uh, as to the number that uh, fell around us, uh, I think there was possibly 300 rounds that dropped in uh, around both uh, McCormick and Newport News. We really uh, came to and uh, started shooting uh, at the counter battery. A total of uh, 730 bullets went out from us. I think there was a great deal of uh, luck there that we didn't get hit. I think there's a great deal of luck that McCormick didn't get hit. I do want to say that uh, I'm very proud of the way everybody responded. The engineers who really must have burned for the fuel in there. The ship's control people and the people directing the guns and the people shooting the guns. And the damage control people and everybody who was all in it. You know, we're all in this thing together. There's not a man on this ship that doesn't contribute to the the fighting power of the ship. And I appreciate every individual here. That is all I have to say tonight. It was uh, quite a show.